is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, 2.04 the time. A lot to get to on this Wednesday afternoon, your afternoon drive. I want to get uh, right to it. Uh, Before we go any further, a little housekeeping. Um, I told you about a mural uh, depicting a flag-draped coffin and uh, the police officer pallbearers. Um, Evidently, the city, well, that doesn't meet code. Uh, We don't like, well, it had to be taken down. So we decided to contact the owner of the uh, lounge where the uh, where the mural was because you know I don't leave anything up to the mayor of Dallas I mean I think the guy forgive me if you're listening I think you wake up in a new day a uh, new world every day it's just the way I see things uh, but uh, producer Dave decided to do some after hours work by the way if you want to get in this business and you want to be a producer it's not a nine to five gig I mean you're you got your feelers out for people, names, places, the whole nine yards, 24 hours a day. That's just the way it is. Always has been that way. Um, not everybody's cut out to do the gig. Uh, you got to have uh, one of, at least one of the, la- the ladders on your DNA uh, ladder. Uh, at least one rung has to be busted um, for you to enjoy this job. Uh, but, uh, Dave, uh, what time did you finally get a hold of, uh, what's her name, uh, Ms. Paz? Diana Paz. Yeah. I, I, I stuck around after work till about 9.30. Yeah. And then I w- drove down to Oak Cliff where the bar, or the LC Lounge is located. Right. And I went in. Yeah. And I asked around. And then I had to wait another hour until she showed up. Right, right. Did you have a sparkling beverage? No, I did not. Okay, very good. Very I, good. I, I considered myself on the clock at the time. There you go. So, All right. plus I need... I'm a lightweight, so I don't need that kind of stuff okay. with me, all Good right? for you. So Good anyway, you. we get back into it. I, I spoke with her about what we saw on Fox 4. The news, mural. The mural yeah. and everything else. And she said that they're going through a process of putting it somewhere else right putting now. Putting it somewhere. She didn't know where. She, she didn't know where it was going to be. She didn't even remember who her city council person was that she was spoke, who she said she spoke to. Well, I, I think they work but, under the condition of anonymity, if I'm not mistaken. Most likely so. And... They're just looking for a place to put this this uh, mural at, All and right. they just don't know where they're going to put it at All this right. time. Is somebody working with her? She's not just floating around out there by herself, right? She's, she has uh, some of the fallen police officers, their their family, helping her. Okay, cool. So that's good. I want to follow up on this because I, 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 I want to see this mural. Okay, of, do you want me to go in- back tonight? Can I get your credit card? <laughs> then I will have a sparkling be- yeah, beverage. Exactly. Please. Um, the fallen officer memorial needs to be put someplace. So if uh, some city councilman is sitting out there, uh, it appears you have a lot of spare time. Um, let us know. Let us know what you're uh, what you're thinking, and let's touch base with uh, Miss Paz uh, again before the end of the week and see if any um, progress is being made there. Not a problem. All right. Uh, by the way, did you see Roseanne last night? I recorded it. Okay, I didn't see it. Okay. I'm going to be up front. Lee, uh, Lee's with us today. Lee, how you doing, bud? I'm good, Rick. How, how about you? How are the cows? cows they going, are right? wonderful. All right, good. Loving the wet weather. I heard you got a bunch of bulls this week. Yes. All right. I'll finish that story off the air with you. All right. Did you uh, <laughs> did you watch Roseanne, by, by the way? You know, I watched the first five minutes. I fell asleep. I'm not going to lie. You know, that's what happens was... when you work hard all day. I, I, admittedly, I didn't watch it. I was never a big fan of Roseanne to begin with, uh, but... The return of Roseanne occurred last night. It dominated, dominated the TV ratings. And and by the way, if I'm watching something for entertainment value, um, you know, they don't have to be a conservative or a liberal or apolitical. Uh, nobody's 100% right. Nobody's 100% wrong. If I'm watching for entertainment purposes, that's what I'm watching. Um, the revived sitcom averaged 18.1 million viewers. Not too bad. Um, it was back-to-back return episodes. Uh, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people said they didn't like it um, on social media. It, uh, you know, basically they brought them back. I think the last uh, Roseanne on the ABC was in 1997. Can you believe it was that long ago? Good Lord. 
Uh, Roseanne plays, uh, of course, uh, a supporter of President Donald Trump, which she is a supporter in real life. Is she a conservative? I don't know. I don't care. Does it make any difference? Probably not. Uh, viewers learn that the death of uh, husband Dan in the show's final episode in 1997 was all just a bad dream. I don't want to be a spoiler, but it's already aired. Um, that Mark, remember Mark, who was played by uh, the late Glenn Quinn, uh, has died on the show as well. Barr, who is a Trump supporter in real life, like I said, took some digs at former Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton on the show, while her sister, Jackie, remember Jackie? Yeah, uh, played by uh, Lori Metcalf. Um, of course, she is diametrically opposed to anything conservative. Uh, Roseanne ran for almost 10 years, I think, uh, from, well, about nine, 88 to 97. Bar won Golden Globe, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of accolades. Uh, the series takes up where the fictional working class family left off 20 years ago. Well, I've got some, if you didn't watch Roseanne last night, um, I'm going to play a little bit of it for you to give you the feel, to give you the flavor, give you the taste of, um, Roseanne's character, and of course, Jackie, the eternal liberal character, um, the Hollywood reporter called Roseanne's ratings unbelievable, compared them with uh, the revival of Will and Grace, which is a show I can't stand. I absolutely, and I have tried, I have tried to watch this because obviously when you uh, talk to the public every day for three hours a day, every week, all month, month after month, year after year, you got to know what's going on. I can't stand the show. Uh, I, I just, you know, if you got a gay, modern family, modern family is very well written and they've got two gay guys on it. Uh, I can deal with that, but they're not flouncing around with feather boas and all the will and grace is just over the top for me. I can't do modern family. Now, see, there's too many characters going why. on, multiple storylines, and I like that in a TV show. I like multiple storylines i got to keep up with. I do too, but I just can't follow Modern Family. Well, you know, uh, you know, you got the old dude uh, with the uh, the young trophy wife, and now they got a kid and her right. son. Um, it's sort of like Nolan Ryan. Uh, every, every older guy out there is going, all right, Nolan, throw that thing. Uh, I mean, you got that going on. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the show. I'm not talking about that. But I'm, <laughs> Will and Grace is just, I, I can't do it. I can't watch that thing for five minutes. I know lots of gay people. I've had gay people in my employ with different companies, and none of them act that way. None of them. Um, so anyway, um, Variety television critic Sonia Sarayaha wrote that while she enjoyed the content, the timing of the acting showed its age. I don't even know what that means. Unfortunately, musicians especially and actors are so caught up in the artiste, um, the, the work, the craft, you're you're reading somebody else's words. You're playing a character. Relax. You know, just step off a little bit. Well, I had to get into character. It took me three days on an island by myself in a chimp named Mickey before I could really involve my... Oh, please, just stop. <laughs> just stop. All right. Uh, 2.11 the time. When we come back, I'll take you to the revival of Roseanne. And then we'll take your response. I'm Rick Roberts, and nothing against Will and Grace if if they're listening. I, I'm sure you're wildly popular. I just don't get it. All right, 17 minutes after the hour, 2.17 the time. Well, I don't know if you're left or right or somewhere in the middle. That's where most people live. Um, the revival of Roseanne after almost 30 years uh, was last night. Admittedly, I didn't watch it. Uh, caught some uh, recordings and caught some of the audio, and I'm going to take you there right now. Um, you either loved it or hated it. I don't think there's any middle ground here. Let me give you some of the uh, the uh, the uh, comments here. Greg Gutfield, you know who Greg Gutfield is. Uh, I'm thinking hashtag Roseanne might be the closest to an honest assessment of the 2017-18 era you're going to find that isn't in your own house. Um, Jonathan Carrera. Hashtag Roseanne, uh, Roseanne premiere wasn't for the left, and it wasn't for the right. It was for real people. Uh, Richard McLean, hashtag Roseanne watching the Roseanne reboot. Yes, and I'm I'm a liberal. It was funny as ever. The conversation was needed. It's not a left or right thing. Uh, we need uh, people to agree to disagree. 
uh, this is what makes the world go round. And then, of course, um, let's see, Cambry Kwana K, the most badass woman patriot ever who doesn't play the Hollywood politically correct game. She speaks her mind, punches back, and is 100% based. Um, I, I don't know about that. I don't know what she is in real life. She supports Trump in real life. But I, I don't have to know that to be entertained. I know some people, well, wait a minute. Are you really conservative or playing one on TV? It doesn't matter to me. Does it matter to you? Um, uh, Brandon, what a change. Hashtag Roseanne is actually a Trump supporter, and this show is not an anti-American left-wing propaganda show. It's about time we had at least one show that didn't hate President Trump, America, and our values. I, You know, I've got to echo that. You know, I, I told you the other day, man, I miss Leno. I miss Letterman. I miss being able at the, because, you know, I'm a night owl. You know, I, I but I get up early. I, I just can't go to sleep, can't turn off the head. Um, so, you know, I, I'll go to sleep, maybe and get up. And I used to be able to turn on television, be entertained, even with Letterman um, or Leno. You know, there were people there that were entertaining. Now you can't watch it. You absolutely, I, I, what, everybody and their dog has a late night show. You got the late show, the late, late show, the late, late, late show, good morning show. I mean, you got everything. And it's all about, I, I tried an experiment. I said, I'm going to watch these. The first anti-Trump joke I hear, I'm going to switch channels. And then the first anti-Trump thing I, I get, I'm going to turn channel. I went through all of them in about four minutes. It's like they don't even have to be talented anymore. They just need a bunch of writers that hate Trump, and that's what they do for an hour. That's not entertaining to me. I, I can't see I'd be entertaining to a, a liberal either. So anyway, I miss that. that I think that's, that guy's right. Um, and then, of course, the liberals came in. Uh, retweet if you already cannot wait until hashtag Roseanne gets canceled. Uh, another one, uh uh, hashtag boycat, uh, boycott Roseanne, such a gross pig. And then um, and then finally, just one of her many strange qualities. She's honestly kind of a lunatic. Started strange and went downhill from there. Um, all right, you ready to go into Roseanneville? All right, this is uh, after 30 years, the return of Roseanne last night. What's up, deplorable? <laughs> to talk this out civilly. Mom and Jackie standing right here, p***y hat in hand. Oh. I don't have time for this. Knee still giving you trouble, Roseanne? Why don't you get that fixed with the new health care all you suckers got promised? Oh. It works good enough to kick your ass, snowflake. <laughs> there you go. All you people go straight to the violence. Every one of you wrapping yourselves up in the flag and clinging to your guns. Oh, that's such a stereotype. Oh, <laughs> Still a good picture. Uh, here's some dressing for the table. Oh, look, Dan, Russian. Penny <laughs> Rose! Oh, it's my little princess. Or senator, or doctor, or captain of industry, because girls can be whatever they want to be. I want to train cats to bark. <laughs> good. I think it's cool. And Jackie thinks every girl should grow up and be president, even if they're a liar, liar, pantsuit on fire. <laughs> I think we know who's a liar and who's on fire, Roseanne. Hey, everybody, this is the first dinner together we've had as a family in a long time. Let's try to survive it. Oh, yeah, first let's say grace. Jackie, would you like to take a knee? <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for this food and for bringing our son DJ home safe from Syria. Please protect his wife Gina and all our troops still overseas. Please watch over our son Jerry, who's on that stupid fishing boat where apparently they don't get phone calls. But most of all, Lord, thank you for making America great again. Mom, no, it's okay, darling. <laughs> Could you have voted for him, Roseanne? He talked about jobs, Jackie. He said he'd shake things up. I mean, this might come as a complete shock to you, but we almost lost our house the way things are going. Have you looked at the news? Because now things are worse. Not on the real news. Oh, police! 
You just can't stand for anybody to have their own opinions about anything, can you? So you tell them how stupid they are all the time, and you get them to question what they believe in their heart is the right thing to do until they make some enormous mistake that tears America apart and brings the world to the brink of nuclear apocalypse. So I'm guessing this isn't about Becky's eggs anymore? You kept saying what a disaster it would be if she got elected and how I wasn't seeing the big picture and how everything was rigged, and then I go into the booth and I voted for Jill Stein! <laughs> Who's Jill Stein? Some doctor! You did such a good job of making me doubt myself and feel so stupid that I choked, which helped get him elected. Well, the important thing is that you voted. All right, uh, 224 the time. Uh, the return of Roseanne after 30 years. And the reaction, uh, extremely divided. Now, you either love it or you hate it. Um <laughs> You know what? I think it's going to do well because I think there are a lot of families out there like that. I mean, in your own family, you've got the Jackie, right? You've got the Jackie. Well, the government's manipulating the weather. We didn't really land on the moon. And Donald Trump is really a KGB agent. I mean, you've got that, right? Uh, you've got My that. Sister. You, uh, your sister. Yep. Right. I, I mean, you've got that, Lee. I mean, you probably run into folks like that, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, we all do. Very seldom, very seldom is a family all one way or the other. There's always somebody in there someplace. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. The uh, The initial ratings were over the top, as they say. All right. Now, when we come back, you obviously hate my idea. You know, I, I have received so much hate mail in the last 24 hours. Amnesty, what are you? What are those liberal blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. I don't have a never-ending checkbook. You may have. Maybe you're willing to pay for this, uh, this grand adventure of illegal aliens for the next 30 years. I'm ready to put a halt to it, to make it stop, to take it away from the people in D.C., which obviously don't have any political will to do anything, and all they're quite content to keep spending your money um, day after day, month after month, year after year. Well, we've got to do this. Yes, amen. Uh, dude, let's fix it. No, you don't want that. You don't want that. Uh, I get it. I get it. There are some people out there, if they don't feel that money being drained from them for these grand adventures that these non-representative representatives are going on, uh, they're okay with it. Uh, Rick, I'm not listening to you anymore because uh, you mentioned amnesty. I don't know. Call it what you want. Call it the uh, call it that uh, that monkey on a desert. Call it Mickey. Okay. Call it whatever you want. Let's just bring it to a halt, shall we? All right. Uh, Two thirty-three. The time. Let me get right to this. Um, by the way, if you're new to the show, because based on some of your email, you haven't listened to the shows. Um, the podcast is available every hour of every show for the last two years. Uh, some guy, you should be talking about gun rights. Good Lord. Have you never listened to this show? You ought to be talking about the, the border wall. Have you never listened to the show? Go to WBAP.com. Go to shows. You'll see Rick Roberts. Hit it right there. Uh, and then you can listen. All right. About exactly what you're talking about. I, I'm just, I'm frustrated beyond description. I, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of being played uh, like uh, a million teenagers were last Saturday by the federal government. What do you mean, Rick? What do you mean? This illegal immigration thing. You know, I, there are some, look, if you're looking for a talk show host, all Republicans are right. All Democrats are bad. I'm not your guy. Because no one's 100% right 100% of the time. No one's 100% wrong 100% of the time. It, it, that's not real life. Now, I can sit here and put on a, a show, do a little tap dance, bring that pony in here. We want we wanted to put a little dog and pony. Yeah, bring me a dog and a pony. And I can I can sit here for three hours and yammer about Republicans are doing everything right. Democrats are doing everything wrong or vice versa. That's not real life. That's not the way life works. You know that. 
But I mean, if that's what you want to hear, again, I'm probably not your guy. Because here's the thing. Over 50% of the reason that illegals are in this country are because we've got a non-representing government. Because we didn't decide, even after 9-11, to create and maintain a border. So if you live in a corrupt uh, corrupt country, you can't feed your kids, what are you going to do? You're going to do whatever you have to do to feed your kids. You would too. So would I. I am sick and tired of time, money, and resources uh, being spent by the empty suits in Washington Somehow, you got the Democrats, we love the illegals. You got the Republicans, we want old people to eat dog food. I mean, you, you've you got all this going on. It's just political theater. Nothing gets done. But you pay for it. You pay for every cent of it. If there are most illegals that are in this country, and you know this as well as I do, or hardworking, trying to raise their family, God-fearing, and they're not causing anybody any problem. Well, they shouldn't be here. Well, you should have elected somebody that would create and maintain a border. So I'm tired of playing with this. More than that, I'm tired of paying for it. You should be too. Now, if you want to sit here three decades from now and have some new guy come to the microphone, check, check, is this on? Okay, put my monkey over there on the table. Yeah, okay, check, check. We're going to talk about illegal immigration. What's the answer? Uh, th- that's what you're going to be doing three decades from now unless you pick up the ball and do something right now. You look at your elected representative in the face, be it Republican or Democrat, and say, hey, stop playing with illegal immigration. First, first and foremost, let me lay it out for you. First and foremost, You build, whether it's a wall, a fence, drones, I don't care. You create a border to the south, and then you maintain it. You know, you don't do this wink, wink, nod, nod uh, to the big corporate donors. Hey, don't worry about it. We're going to get enough of them over here. They'll work for five five bucks an hour. No, don't worry about it. We got that voting block coming in from Central America. Don't worry. Stop playing with it. Stop charging the American people to create your new voting blocks, to create cheap labor for the big corporate donors. Stop it. Do what you're charged to do under the Constitution, the sanctity, sovereignty, and security of a nation, which includes borders. That's what you do. And I'm ready for it to end because I don't want to be talking about this five years from now. We've been talking about it for a half century. Create the border. First, create the border. Maintain it. Not going to happen overnight. Get to work. It's uh, 2.38 Central Time. All right? Give you 30 minutes to finish your coffee and get to work. Then, you end chain migration. All right? Rick, that's racist. Why why is it racist? Because it's got the word chain in it. Okay, shut up. You know what I'm talking about. So does everybody else. You in chain migration. The Fourth Amendment's not there for that reason. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Third, you vet people that come forward and say, hey, we're here. Um, we're here illegally. We want to assimilate. We want to be Americans. Um, let them, that's good. You get a non-voting ID. You want to work towards citizenship? Work towards citizenship. When you get it, you can vote. And you cut off any over-the-top government benefits that anybody else wouldn't get. Okay, there you go. It's done. Whether it's 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, or 20 million, because you're getting all kinds of numbers depending on the group. All right? You know, reconquista. You lost the war. Get over it. Texas doesn't belong to you. Same thing with Southern California. I, well, when it comes to Southern California, I don't care if they want to give it to you, give it to you. That's fine. But the United States is the United States. We may not act like United States, but we are. So there you go. You create a border, uh, border whether I, I don't care how you do it. Well, I want something just like the Berlin Wall. Shut up. Uh, we create a border. We maintain that border. We end chain migration. 
We allow people to come forward so they can be vetted. If they're not criminals, gangbangers, drug dealers, uh, they can stay. They get a non-citizen ID. They can work towards this, their citizenship. If they become citizens, then they can vote. They don't get any other benefits that any other American would get. All right? Then you put this thing to bed. Democrats, sorry, you're going to have to look for voting blocks elsewhere. Maybe they'll vote Democrat. Maybe they won't. If the Republicans could get their ducks in a row, they would be a force to be reckoned with as far as the Democrats. But that that's it. You tell the Democrats and the Republicans, okay, here is the fix to the immigration problem. I don't want to hear another peep out of you. I don't want to see any, well, you know, we're going to need more money. To, uh, we're suing this sanctuary city, and that sanctuary city is suing the Department of Justice. You know how much all this is costing you to continue debating this immigration thing over and over and over again? The politicians don't want it to be fixed. They're making too much money from it. Do you get that? Do you understand that? They are making money hand over fist. By the, They don't want to fix this. They don't want to fix the immigration issue. I mean, look at what we're dealing. We're Americans. We're supposed to be able to put one foot in front of the, the other and breathe at the same time. What are we dealing with? Watch the news. Stormy Daniels is in town. I don't care. I, I truly do not care. Stormy Daniels has a story to tell about Trump. Everybody's got a story to tell about Trump. Everybody. Now, let him get, look what he's been able to accomplish in a year fighting everybody, and probably including his own party. Well, not probably, certainly. Isn't it time to move forward, or are you just so comfortable with this? Well, I want to continue to pay for all these grand experiments and lawsuits and sanctuary cities and all the rest. I don't want to fix it. That's what the politicians want. They want you to just beat, be beat down to the point where, I don't care, just take whatever you need, leave me, leave me some crumbs, whatever it is. All right, let me step aside very quickly. We need to check your afternoon drive. And by the way, no, I won't even go there right now. Uh, I'll go there later. Uh, 242 the time. What are 18 wheelers doing in the express lane in five o'clock traffic? Two of them on their sides. Nobody's going anywhere. Thanks, boys. Not us. All right, uh, 247 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion. Oh, oh no. Rick, what are, what are you thinking? Rick, Rick, what are you doing? What I thought you were a conservative. Oh, my God. I'm a realist. And my conservatism runs through my entire life, not on one specific issue. I'm a realist. And the, the reality is D.C. is getting rich off illegal immigration, and we're sitting around, don't let them vote, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. And that's exactly what they want. They want you yapping around the front porch like a bunch of hungry dogs, and they're making money hand over fist. Build, maintain a border. In-chain migration. Photo ID to vote. Vet them. If they're not drug dealers, they can stay. They're not citizens unless they become citizens, work toward it. And obviously, if you're not a citizen, you can't vote. You know, I don't, I don't really know what conservatives are so worried about when it comes to voting. By the numbers, they don't get out and vote much as it is. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to Gary in Dallas. Gary, thank you for waiting. How are you doing, Gary? I'm doing great, Rick. How are you? I'm good. I'm just tired of funding uh, Washington, D.C.'s grand adventure with illegal immigration and not getting anything done. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I've been listening to your program, and as I told the call screener, you know, I agree with everything that you've been saying about it. It's a problem that we've got to fix, and there is a fix to it. I thought there was going to be a fix in 1986, uh, but surprise, surprise, there was no fix. I agree with everything that you've said as far as the illegals that are here now with one caveat. If you're here illegally and you turn, you come in and say, hey, I want to apply for this uh, long-term, call it amnesty. Or residency. They, they, get, yeah, they residency. get residency. 
you get 15 or 20 years before you can vote. I, that's one of the things Trump was saying. And I think because the first act that you committed upon entering the United States was to break our immigration law, then you have to find, you have to pay a fine. And I think the DACA guys had to pay some kind of fee to get DACA approved. But I think there's got to be some kind of skin in the game to show that, hey, uh, I've been fined because if you break the law, if you speed down the streets, you're going to have to pay a fine uh, or lose your license or something. All, the, all citizens are going to have to do that. So if you want to come in and want to get residency, pay a fine and do everything that you've already said. I won't repeat it for the sake of brevity, but everything that you've already said makes completely good sense because we've created a problem. And nobody's coming up with a fix. I think your fix is good. You need to can it. You need to send it to Washington via uh, cruise. I, you can't send it via Cornyn, but maybe you can send it via cruise uh, and maybe get something done with it. I think it's a good idea, and I just wanted to call and tell you that I was listening. And, no, I don't think you're crazy. I just think in addition to everything else, find them. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I, – I'm, I'm so done funding I, yeah, the I grand the grand illegal immigration experiment that they're doing in dc it's not helping right. us it's not helping your pocketbook it's not helping the people that are here working and going to school and trying to make it the only people making out on this thing are politicians both left and right well we, we can uh, put another group in there how about the english teachers <laughs> we could uh, english teachers could get uh, a boon here by teaching the folks that are coming in here, mostly Hispanic, who don't speak English very well, uh, have some classes, and they start making some money. We, on we the could side. we could do all kinds of thing, uh, things, Gary. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to do is create more bureaucracy to stack on a bureaucracy to stack on bureaucracy. It's time that the American people let Washington D.C. know, both Republicans and Democrats, no more. We're done. You've been playing with illegal immigration for the last 50 years. Why? Because it's lucrative. It makes you guys lots of money. And the only people getting tapped for this lawsuit and that lawsuit and sanctuary cities and now we're suing this, the only people being tapped are, are the people of America. So f here's a way to fix it. Well, no, but they're going to beat the drum. No, they got to be deported. They got to be deported. All right. Well, in addition to a couple hundred billion a year, how much more is that going to be? I'm done. I'm through playing your illegal immigration game. Most illegal immigrants in this country, yeah, they walked across uh, what would be a southern border because we didn't create one or maintain it. Most of them are here to feed their families, get an education, and all of that. And given the opportunity, they would assimilate. See, D.C. knows that, too. They're just not telling you. They're just not telling you. So, you offer them residency. Did I say citizenship? No, I did not. You offer them residency. So they don't have to worry about midnight ice at the front door or your place of business or your school. Now, if you're a, a gangbanger, a drug dealer, human smuggler, any of the way, you got to go. Adios, mi amigo. You got to go. Everybody else gets residency. You want to work towards citizenship? Well, there you go. You just cut off the money train for Washington, D.C., didn't you? And you stopped taking money out of your own pocket, sending it to Washington to play this stupid game. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. Uh, Casey in Hearst. Casey, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Casey? Yes, sir. Uh, privileged to talk to you, Mr. Roberts. Love your show. Thank you. I've only got a quick minute because I'm working, but the uh, you're exactly right. There has to be a there has to be some kind of finality to the situation, and you're right with you start with the border, and then all these folks that talk about how they're here and they're standing up for the illegal immigrants and they're here for those that are just trying to be Americans and assimilate, move in, fine, raise your money. Where you have a you've got coffers going for everything. Put your money where your mouth is. Republicans, Democrats, I don't care. Have them come forward. Have the vetting process start. If they're not supposed to be here, if they're dangerous, they're out. Those that have been here the longest get moved to the front of the line. Those that can turn in MS-13 gang members and drug dealers and rapists, you can turn in these bad folks. We're going to bump you up to the front of the line. Let's clean it up. Let's get done, and let's move on to the next topic. Do you hear, what, do you hear what's going on on this show right now? You know, the, 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 this, this flailing of arms, gnashing of teeth, 
pulling of hair by Washington, D.C. What do we do about illegal immigrants? We're going to sue California. For what? California is broke. They borrow money from the federal government. Uh, the Department of Justice is suing California. California, well, what about this sanctuary city and that sanctuary city? All that goes away, doesn't it? It all goes away. All that bureaucracy, all that money, all the, all those Benjamins, instead of going into the pockets of the non-representing representatives in D.C., you get to keep it in yours because we don't have an illegal immigration problem anymore. No, we fixed it. When the public officials didn't want to, we did. If you're a bad guy, you got to go. Everybody else is hardworking, going to school, trying to feed their family just like everybody else. Yeah. You get to stay. You get residency. You don't get citizenship. You can work towards that if you want. When you get that, you can vote if you want. You know, you're going to be years down the road. But the, the bureaucracy, the money train stops right now. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be. A few hundred million more like me Just trying to keep it free yeah. Rick Roberts starts Rick Roberts starts right now All right, 304 the time You know, you know, save the hate mail for later I, You know, I'm just sick and tired of being bled dry by the federal government Getting played, if you will on this thing called illegal immigration. They know the vast majority of illegals here aren't gangbangers or drug dealers or cartels. They know that. They got to keep this thing alive. The federal government is acting just like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. They don't want the races to get along because if we get along, they're not relevant. They don't want to solve the immigration problem. If they did, there would have been a border wall up uh, 30 minutes after the second tower fell on 9-11. That, it makes them too much money. And some of you help them. Hell no, deport them all, get rid of them. Okay, that's like saying they're going to come take all your guns. How Physically, how would they do that? Physically. Now, I, I, granted, there are enough people out there that want to take your gun rights, uh, and there are people uh, like El Conquista and all the other, well, they, you know, this part of Texas is really Mexico's. Well, okay, well, uh, we'll see you later. You have to create a border, and that's the thing Reagan did wrong. Reagan's amnesty was supposed to end all of this. Problem was, he gave the amnesty first and tried to have security second. That's just backwards. you got to do it the other way around. Now, aren't you tired of paying for all this? Who do you think's paying for it? All these lawsuits and sanctuary cities and all this nonsense, DACA and all this. Who do you think pays for this? You do. All right. Uh, let's go to John in Sweetwater. John, thanks for waiting. How you doing, John? I'm well. How are you, Rick? I'm very well. Thanks. Um, I think we need to take the federal judges out of this equation because they're going to block your plan every step of the way. I like your plan, by the way, but... To build the border wall, you know they're gonna they're gonna keep saying, "Oh, there's a lawsuit now because this cricket might be endangered." You know, if you build a wall, and and it, as far as all the people not getting to vote, some federal judge is gonna block you there somewhere in the Ninth Circuit Court of, of Appeals will uphold that. Well, the well, Ninth Circuit the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is the most overturned co uh, court in the nation, and now is probably a pretty good time to make a run at them because they're talking very seriously about splitting that court up. It's just way too big and it's way too overturned. Um, I don't think the uh, as far as the citizenship uh, as a means to vote, you know, we always talk about this. So don't give them the vote. Don't give them the vote. Do you know we haven't had anything higher? than 55% since 1968 in voter turnout in this country. I mean, the bar is pretty low. Americans are one of the least active voting populations among developed countries. Uh, I mean, it's it's amazing. Clocks in about 31 out of 35 countries in voter turnout. Uh, I mean, it consistently, 55%, 53%, 52%, 53%, 49%. Yeah, that's a, is that of the whole population? Yes. Or of the illegal aliens no that's a the entire population we're always worried about well who can vote and who can't 
uh, half of the people that are that are of voting age don't even vote. How many of them vote? What percentage of the illegal aliens vote? Oh, I, I don't think you have any way of knowing that, do you? Mm, exit polls, I think, you know, let's say let's say 30 percent vote. Well, 30 percent of 22 million is uh, what, six point or no, seven. I, I don't you know, see again uh, no. if you if you tabled that conversation uh, to somebody in D.C. You said, well, I don't know. It's a great question. Let me convene a panel uh, panel to, to start a study. And after you get through with it, it costs you $15 million to find out it had no significant input anyway. I, I mean, look, we, we, we helped create this problem. We need to fix it. The people in Washington aren't going to fix this for us. They can't even create a border. Well, I, I think Trump will. I, I think before his uh, term's out, we're going to have a wall of some sort. I hope so. I hope you're right, uh, John. Uh, I mean it with everything in me. I I don't care if it's a wall, a fence, drones, uh, technology, more border. I don't care. Uh, you know, get a bunch of Americans to hold hands and from the Pacific to Brownsville. I I, I don't I don't care. It's fine. Um, all right. Uh, nine minutes after the hour, let's go to uh, JC. JC, thanks for waiting. How you doing, JC? Uh, pretty good, Rick. Um, you know, I think I was going to ask you a question on whether or not your proposal included, obviously, uh, beefing up the uh, the border. And I think you pretty much answered oh, it that. It has to, article. but that's got to be done before anything is done. Okay. So I'm glad because I, I wasn't around for all the segments. So I, I would presume that, that that's what you had proposed. But let me also throw in there that you cannot, you've, we've got to create a, a new, uh, if, you're, if we're going to go down this road, which I don't believe we should, but if we are, we have to create a new segment. Uh, that uh, that cannot vote. We can give them everything else. They pay taxes. They get their Social Security. They get their Medicare. Uh, every single benefit that you know we get uh, eventually when you become a citizen. But we cannot let them vote. That is, that is an absolute. I mean, listen. I was. I came here from Venezuela. My parents brought me over. My dad was from Argentina. He uh, he had a, a workers permit, and we had to work our tails off. We had to. I, I was constantly thinking about my legal status my parents were always kind of teaching us about assimilation these are things that you will wipe out which are completely necessary uh as a part of the process when you just do blanket amnesty I no, I, look I, I have never ever advocated ever advocated for blanket amnesty uh, because if you okay. do that you repeat the uh, re repeat what reagan did and that okay. didn't work at all Let's let's just say I'm when I say blanket amnesty, I know you're saying to vet them. And, you know, if you've got a criminal pass, obviously you, you don't get to have it. I call blanket amnesty anybody that came here legally and gets to stay uh, if they have a clean record. Technically, they don't. I, I get it. But at the same time, if we're going to look at this realistically, we must create a new a new citizen, a new standard, a new something, a new category of people. We, you cannot just give up. I promise you, you think that you know the numbers. We are in a new world. We I Look, here, here's the thing, JC, and I, I'm, I'm pushed on time here. I, I get it. The reality is we're getting sucked dry by Washington, D.C. as they continue to play this illegal immigration game. It doesn't work for you. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for the rest of naturalized Americans. It doesn't work for the illegals that are working hard. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything for anyone except line the pockets of a bunch of empty suits in Washington, D.C. That's the reality, and that's what I want to stop. All right, uh, 316 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, the Court of Public Opinion. You know, the latest cottage industry for D.C., is what? Fighting this freak out question over the 2020 census. Even Rubio got involved. He uh, criticized the latest absurd, uh, well, he called it a freak out, coming from Democrats over the Trump administration plan to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. Actually, it was in there before. But so let's once again get all the attorneys involved. Who do you think pays their fee? Get all the attorneys in California, get all the government attorneys. Uh, and if you're not busy asking uh, if somebody's an illegal, um, special counsel, Trump campaign aide, well, let's see, he needs some attorneys, they need some attorneys. Trump um, is talking about pardoning Flynn and Mueller. Who do you, th for what? Chasing ghosts under the bed? You never, you spent a year investigating Russia, didn't come up with anything, except they gave a lot of dough to Clinton's foundation. 
And they're do, this thing, this illegal immigration thing is like a cottage industry that just keeps chugging out the money. Not to you or me or the illegals, to the politicians. We're getting played. Aren't you ready to stop that? With some common sense, realistic ways to fix it. You're not going to go back and rewrite history. You think you're going to get any justice out of D.C.? Really? Is Hillary Clinton wearing an orange jumpsuit? I don't think so. Uh, let's go to Tom in Fort Worth. Tom, thanks for waiting. Hi, Tom. Hi, Rick. I feel your pain. I can tell the agony in your voice. <laughs> I just, my God, it, it, it never ends. It goes on for decades, and the only people making any money are the politicians. Well, the way you break the cycle is you, you just use the phrase of common sense solutions. And I'm going to put forth a couple of common sense solutions. First of all, have a registration grace period, maybe six months to nine months, maybe nine months to a year. Broadcast it on every vehicle you can, every every way you can, so that everybody not only in the country knows that there's a registration grace period, but they also know the consequences if they don't come to the surface and register. Now, the gap is somebody earlier, I think it was Bill from Sweetwater, mentioned the fact that, well, you know, the consequences one way or another of how they got in the country – well, that's part of the problem. You can be in the country illegally, but is it a misdemeanor or is it a felony? It's never been codified. So a person that's in the country illegally has no fear of charges against them. So when you have that registration grace period, you also implement a, a statute that says after the, after the end of the grace period, whether it's nine months or a year, whatever, anybody found to be in the country illegally or anybody coming into the country illegally will automatically be charged with a felony. Now that's going to catch a lot of people's attention. And then the second thing is during the registration period, my God, you can do it online. You could go to post offices. The only place you don't want to do it is in the democratic national committee registration centers. I mean, but you could do it in schools, you could do it in churches, you could do it in uh, city halls, post offices, or you can even do it with an app online. The key is to get everybody to come to the surface once and for all. If they come to the surface, they then start the registration process. How you designate them is, is, is a different topic. You got to get them to voluntarily come to the surface. If they don't, then they know they will be automatically removed from the country. No, well, they're not afraid of that either. They haven't been removed from the country for 50 years. Uh, I mean, I understand what you're saying. It is not my desire to create, uh, create 10 more bureaucracies to set on top of this one, but you're right. There ought to be, there, there, there could be ways for people to come forward and say, Hey, you know, I'm here without documentation. I'm an illegal. I came here. Well, actually, there's there's two categories. There's improper entry. That's a crime. Unlawful presence is not a crime in the United States. But, you know, let somebody else figure that out. I'm just saying there are ways to do this. There are ways to fix it. There are ways to bring this thing to a grinding halt. But there's no political will to do so. There's no political will to have a southern. Have you ever sat around and asked yourself, "How come we don't have a southern border?" Oh, we got a, we got a handful of uh, you know border crossing areas. I mean, in, especially in California, you see them. You know, hey, how you doing? Go on by. Uh, what? And they're primarily there for drugs. San Ysidro's one. There, you got a handful. Have you ever thought to your? Think about this for just a second. Whether you agree with me or not. No, I want to deport every single one of them. By God. Okay, well, that's probably never going to happen. It hasn't happened in a half century. It's not going to happen tomorrow. But if, if you're of that mindset, sit very still wherever you are and ask yourself, why does America not have a southern border? I mean, it's on maps. You know, there's a little line that goes across. There's a river, a Tijuana River. Uh, but why, why do we not have a southern border? Like every other country on planet Earth. 
just sit real still and think about, I wonder why, you know, we're, we've been here a while, a couple hundred years. Why, why do we not have a southern border? Ask yourself that question. And all of a sudden, you get a totally different mindset about the federal government, don't you? Don't you? Why do we not have a southern border? We've got a northern border, sort of. I mean, I used to, uh, I was negotiating a bunch of business deals in Victoria Island. And I had to cross the border every day. And, you know, it was, they knew me by first name. Still had to pop the trunk, do all the stuff. (laughs) Why? Why do we not have a southern border? That's the question. I want you to think about that for just a second. Why does the United States of America not have a border to the south? And while you're asking yourself that, everybody seems to, oh my God, they're going to vote. Oh, run for your lives. Less than half of Americans that are voting age vote. What are you worried about? Now, I mean, think about that for a second. That to me is astonishing. That, that to me is incredible. You know, what percentage, uh, you know, the latest figures I think are 2016. Um, it, it, why, why do Americans not b- vote? Not even 60%. Hasn't been 60% since the 1960s. 1960, 62%. 1964, 61.9%. This is of all people in the United States, voter turnout. 1968, 60%. And then downhill from there. Downhill from there. 49% in 1996. 51% in 2000, 54% in 2012. Ask yourself two questions before you start yelling at me for trying to end something that is costing you money, your kid's birthright, and making a bunch of fat politicians richer. All right? Why do we not have a southern border? And why do only half of people that are eligible to vote, why, why do half of them, not even bother. All right, uh, three thirty-three. The time. Just so we're clear, do any of you really think we're going to build a Berlin-style wall from the Pacific to Brownsville, Texas? You, you don't. You don't have to build that kind of wall to create a border. You don't have to do that. And by the way, that's estimated to cost, what, $25 billion in this ridiculous omnibus that was passed, what, $1.3 trillion, I think. We talked about it all day the other day. How much money was uh, earmarked to build the wall? Just over a billion. Yeah, we're about $24 billion short. Oh, well. Let me, let me try to do something here. I am so sick and tired of politicians on the left and right playing the American people for all that it's worth on this illegal immigration thing when the only people making any money is the government. Government, you're paying for everything. Improper entry is a crime. Let's be clear. The most common crime associated with illegal immigration is probably improper entry. Under federal criminal law, It's a misdemeanor, a misdemeanor for an alien, a non-citizen, to either enter or attempt to enter the United States at any time or place other than designated by immigration officers. Okay? So those things you see like at San Ysidro and other places, it's illegal. It's a misdemeanor to elude examination or inspection by immigration officers. See what you got on you. You got any fruit? You got any uh, 
Any uh, poultry? You got any uh, beef? You got any dope? Yeah. Attempt to enter or obtain entry to the U.S. by willfully concealing, falsifying, or misrepresenting material facts. Well, uh, what's, what's the punishment? Because the government, both the Democrats and Republicans, have got the entire country all worked up. I'm surprised people aren't standing on the rooftops. What do we do now? We're being overrun. The punishment under that law is no more than six months of incarceration and $250 in civil penalties. That's less than it takes to become a citizen. These acts of improper entry, including the so-called border jumping, how many times have you heard that, are criminal acts associated with illegally immigrating to the U.S., misdemeanor. Like all other criminal charges in the U.S., improper entry must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt in order to convict in a court of law. Well, it's going to be like Brahms. Here's your number. Now hearing your court case. Can you imagine? We're the most litigious country on planet Earth. Throw that in the mix. No, you don't want to go there. Unlawful presence. That's not a crime. Some people assume that all immigrants who are on the U.S. without legal status must have committed improper entry. Well, that's not the case. Many foreign nationals legally enter the country on a valid work uh, visa, travel visa, student visa, but they fail to leave before their visa expires for any number of reasons. But mere unlawful presence in the country, believe it or not, is not a crime. It's a violation of federal immigration law to remain in the country without legal authorization, but that violation is punishable by civil penalties, not criminal penalties. Number one among those civil penalties is deportation or removal. And that's what a bunch of people have got America all worked up about. Deport them, line up the buses. Okay, well, that's a physical impossibility. That's where an unlawful resident may be detained or removed from the country. Unlawful presence can also have, you know, quite a few negative consequences for a resident who may seek to gain re-entry or permanent residency. Probably not because we can't keep track of anything from last week, let alone last year, at the governmental level. Both improper entry and unlawful presence can be avoided by any immigrant to the U.S., but an illegal alien cannot be criminally charged or even put in jail simply for being undocumented. Did you know that? Yeah, two classifications. I'm I'm sick and tired of politicians funding their retirement accounts by ginning up the constituency to think we're being overrun. In some cases, in some geographical areas, we are. So what do you do? Create and enforce a border. And then you make it uh, some way, somehow, you can be a resident if you're not a criminal. If you're here, hardworking, God-fearing, raising your kids, trying to put food on the table, which is, that's a majority. That's a vast majority of the illegals here. Escaping a totally corrupt country where they couldn't put enough food on the table to support themselves, they came here. You probably would too. I know I would. But do you hear about that in the news? No. You just hear about the criminal aspect of illegal immigration. To slam the Republicans, they're not protecting you, they're not protecting. It's all a political theater. And we're paying for everybody's ticket. Do you, do you see what's going on? Just like those, those I think they calculated a million of those kids took part in that protest on Saturday, March for Our Lives. And by the way, they, Obama, well, they're only 15 and 16. And somehow in study hall, they got this all together. If you buy, no, I'm not even going to say that. You know that's not true. But what all they had to do was demonize a term loosely used, assault weapon, Republicans and Trump, and all of a sudden, you've got a nationwide protest. 
The politicians have done the same thing to you and me on this thing called illegal immigration. This is a big country. Big country. We got plenty of room. But we need a border. And we need it enforced. Numero uno. Number one. Create, maintain a border. And then, instead of trying to turn over every rock in the quarry, you have you give people an incentive to come forward. Okay, you can be a resident. Not a citizen. You can be a resident. Work towards your citizenship, if you like. Once you get that, you can vote. That would require photo ID to vote. Oh, no, that's too... That's too cumbersome on the elderly, on those of color. Well, that's garbage, and you know it. You know, a lot of things have to fall into place, but it needs to come to a stop. Because all you are doing, and all you have done for the last half century, is fun political theater at the expense of your pocketbook, your taxes, the illegals. The only people getting rich on this thing are the people in D.C., Aren't you ready for that to stop? Aren't you ready to come to to a point and say, okay, boom, create a border, maintain it. Are we, have we assured ourselves we maintain? Okay, good. Now we'll go into phase two. You can't tell me that won't work. Unless, of course, you just want to talk about illegal immigrants for the next 30 years. I'm pretty sure you don't. All right, uh, 3.46 the time. Man, the email is levitating. Rick, you are ignorant of the economics of supply and demand. Your illegal immigration scheme, my scheme, <laughs> my scheme. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not making a dime off this. And the politicians in D.C. are funding their retirement accounts on keeping you ginned up about illegal immigration. Why do you skip the demand side? I haven't. Uh, go to my podcast You'll find everything there. You know, the, you know, you have to forgive a lot of these emails because obviously people can't listen to all three hours or the previous day. So they think that you're either excluding something on purpose. People are predisposed to what they want to hear. I'm sick and tired of getting played by the politicians, the Democrats and the Republicans. If the Republicans wanted a border, it would have been there. All right. Uh, let me go to um, Debbie in the colony. Debbie, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Debbie? Hey, Rick. It's my pleasure, and I'm doing fabulous. And I want to thank you for your program because, number one, I like to listen to something that teaches me something, educates me, and makes me think, which leads me up to why I'm calling because up until today, I – wouldn't have agreed with your program that you outlined. I was more along the lines of um, the current Republican um, format, you know, of um, evicting people. But I never had that in my heart ever. And I wondered about the practicality. And then listening to what you had to say, plain and simple was, it's like being, you know, how come that didn't come up before? I don't know, but I really appreciate that. You laid that out so well, and I agree with you on the the wall first. That any everybody in the conservative Republican movement, I think, agrees with that. And then the grace period, and we do a fine, and then probation. They've broken the law. They go on probation. I don't know, five years, whatever, and um, they mess up, and then they're out of there. You know. Um, well, that's that's to the, some degree. DACA already has that built in. You know, they get uh, they get DUI or anything, they're gone. But the reason you haven't heard of it before is because so many people are making so much money off of it in D.C. Uh, and they don't want to solve it. I, I'm just sitting here like you. I'm tired. I mean, I could I could come back in here 30 years from now, and if we, the people, don't do something about it, we're going to be having the same conversations because there's no political will to fix it. And I agree with you on that. And, you know, how they got all those students together for the gun march. Well, we know the students didn't pay for that, of course. Of course not. But um, we need a march on Washington, our capitals. If you can't go to a capital, 
you go to your city hall, where, wherever, you know, all of the Americans and even the DACA, even the immigrants, because this program is for them. And if they want to be able to stay in America, they should be out there, too. And that's where we need to convince them that, you know, hey, we all want the same thing. We all want to live side by side together, harmony, all that, you know, butterflies and dream stuff. But, um, yeah, I, I, and I would. This would be a march I would, I would definitely do. And every single person that has ever worked for me, and I can promise you, without even knowing that probably 90% of the people that have come and helped me redo my kitchen and clean my house and done my yard are illegal immigrants. And they happen to be wonderful family people. I've met their children and such. You know, they work very, very hard. And um, I would definitely be getting them out to vote. And, and one time recently, I did have a guy over fixing my house, and I talked to him about the new DACA law. And I told him I even have a brother-in-law that's a DACA kid, you know, and um, that it's the Democratic Party that's holding it back. So I explained all that to him. And it was like, oh, that's not what they say on, you know, whatever their Spanish television is. So. Right, right. Univision or, yeah, it, you're, you're right. Here's the thing, Debbie. You know, we, uh, we think that the government is trying to work in our best interest. You know, that's what you would normally think. There's the federal government. Founding fathers called it the general government. And, you know, we assume that they're working in our best interest. They're not. They're working on building their political camps. Uh, you, know, you know, this could have been solved 30, 40 years ago when the numbers were manageable. There's no political will, quite honestly, on the left or right, because too much money is being made. Uh, it, it, it just... You know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I hit the wall with this thing. You know, I don't want to hear from Republicans or Democrats um, about, well, this is the situation. We're going to file a suit from the Department of Justice on sanctuary. I don't want to hear about that because we're footing the bill. You know, nobody's making money except politicians and a bunch of lawyers. Fix it. It's, it's a misdemeanor, number one, for improper entry, unlawful presence, overstaying a visa is not even a crime. So... Why are we all ginned up about this? Because the politicians get us that way so that they can separate us and get our votes. And Republicans, stop letting the Democrats set the agenda and run the narrative. You know, if Republicans would stand up and say, you know what? This illegal immigration thing has gone on way too long. Way too long. We're going to fix it. Whether you like it, whether you don't, you can't maybe wave a magic wand and deport, you know, 15, 20 million people. That's not going to happen. And if it could, we'd have to raise your taxes because it'd cost a lot of money. More so than now. We just signed a $1.3 trillion omnibus bill. And why Trump did that, I'll never know. And out of a projected $25 billion wall, we got a billion dollars. A little bit short. So Republicans stand up, say we're going to fix it. This is how we're going to fix it, and we're going to be done with it. That's what Reagan tried to do back in the 80s. He just did it backwards. Yeah, I mean, you, saying that you're going to create a border and maintain it is not the same as having it done already, then allowing residency for non-criminal aliens. That's the way you do it. It... it does this make any sense? Am I talking to myself here? No, I, I got you. I mean, I it just, why? maybe people are just comfortable having something to bitch about. Maybe that's it. I don't, because certainly the Democrats are going to give the liberals something to gripe and moan and complain and wet their pants over. The Republicans, oh, the Democrats. Again, if you're looking for a talk show host, that for three hours is going to tell you all Republicans are right. Yes. Amen. The, and all the Democrats are Satan's spawn. Oh yes. Okay. That's not the way life is. That's not the way your life is. I'm not that guy. I try to look at something realistically and say, Hey, from a common sense perspective, we got to fix this. We got to stop this or your great, great grandkids are still going to be dealing with this issue. And it's going to be a lot more expensive then. Hey, Washington, 
Where's the damn wall? This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, 404 the time. Can we can we please stop talking about oh we're gonna have a Berlin Wall? It's gonna go from the Pacific to the Brownsville, Texas. No, we're not. Number one, the topography isn't correct, and nobody's gonna do that. Nobody's gonna do that. Besides, what, what are we talking? 2,000 miles zigzagging back and forth? Oh, Rick, you don't know what you're talking about. What about that Great Wall of China? That's a dang old wall you can see from outer space. That's a dang them, them Chinese folks built a wall. We could do the same dead gum thing now. All right. Let's discuss that, shall we? Dang straight. You can see that sucker from outer space now. Yeah, well, a little different. The Great Wall of China ranges from a couple feet high to 30 feet high. It took 2,000 years to build, and it covers 13,000 miles. How long? 2,000 years. You willing to wait that long? Oh, dang. Well, what about the Berlin Wall? What about that? A little different. Covers a total of 96 miles when it stood. And only 27 miles separated the two cities. So let's be real. That's all I'm asking. Let's be realistic. You know, I'm not a conspiracy nut. I'm not uh, the sky is falling. I'm not any of that. I'm a realist. The fact is, you're never going to build a Berlin Wall for 2,000 miles or the Great Wall of China. Unless you got 2,000 years, you're not doing anything with. We can create a border. Other countries did it. We can do it. Do that first, then give non-criminal aliens in this country residency. Because right now, all they're guilty of is misdemeanors anyway. Then guess what? All the cash that's lining the pockets of Republicans and Democrats in the nation's capital because they're getting the entire country ginned up about illegal immigration. Whoa, what's going to happen now? That stops. That stops. All right, let's go to Wayne in Dallas. Wayne, thank you for waiting. I appreciate your patience. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem, Rick. This is definitely, uh, you know, a big issue to talk about, so I'm glad you keep bringing it to the public, uh, the public guy every day. The um, reason I was calling, though, was um, you talk about the cost. And uh, I looked at a report that FAIR did recently, and that's the Federation for American... Oh, I'm very familiar with them, yeah. Okay, just so the uh, so audience knows who they are. And in, in 2017, their report indicated that the total cost, illegals cost, the federal government and the states is around $134 billion, which I think is probably low. It's probably much higher than that, but... Well, Trump... The, Trump said three hundred billion. That's exorbitant. I think fair is closer, but they are probably a bit conservative. Sure. Now here's the point. Um, so the, this these uh, this welfare to the illegals or the cost is in the form of uh, EBT housing and medical and stuff like that, and it's going to people that are a high percentage don't work right now. They have no skills. Don't speak the language. And really are, are just uh, what you would call right now, they're consumers. And if you wave this magic wand and we start legalizing a lot of these folks, this is not going to change. So if this cost is going to be 130 to $200 uh, billion per year, we're already a trillion dollars in the hole with our budget deficits and everything. So I just don't see how this can work unless we figure out a way to cut the welfare benefits and just uh, give them a deal, say, hey, you can stay, but there's no welfare, there's no medical, there's no food, no assistance at all. Then you find out who's really going to stay here, and this is where the rubber meets the road. And we decide, you know, uh, how to go from there. 
because then we'll know who's committed to really becoming a full-fledged American. Well, that's almost to a word. That's exactly what Tulsa, Oklahoma did. Um, they, they went through, well, first they informed the employers, um, we're coming after you. That was number one. Number two, uh, they took a, a check of how many people that uh, had multiple addresses and, and basically invented information for public assistance or city assistance. Um, and over the course of literally, it was three weeks, um, they self-deported. Well, yeah, that's my point. Because if you cut off the spigot, then the people who really are, are going to be quality people that want to you know, dive in and be like we all do, get up and go to work every day without getting the benefits and these big uh, – they, they sometimes these illegals can get these $10,000 checks from the government. Well, and that's the ITC type program. Yeah, that's got. that's been proven false. No, that's, that no. It, that in new cars and home loans and all the rest. Uh, no, there's what, been a TV station in Indianapolis that did a complete expose around it. Uh, I'm I'm telling you what, you know, I, I don't know about the TV station, but I mm-hmm. know about you know the the white pages uh, in the GAO and exactly what was going on. If that state or that city, I didn't see what you're talking about. Well, but if that city did, key, did that, yeah. that's that's on them. Yeah. You know, if you did a keyword search on WTHR.com, illegals exploit tax, tax loopholes, you'll see they, they've taken the government for several millions millions of dollars on this uh, program that was set up for, like, uh, Americans that were low income. So they have taken advantage of it. Well, I, w- I wouldn't it. doubt that. I wouldn't doubt it at all. They took advantage of the fact we had uh, a bunch of politicians that didn't want to create a border and walked across. Oh, sure, I understand that. But I'm saying is, let's go back to the point is, let's cut off all benefits to them. Why do we have a privileged class like this right under our noses when we all have to go to work every day? uh, Look, you know, I know a lot of illegals. Uh, I know of a lot of illegals. I don't know them personally. And they do get up and go to work every day. Are there those that are working the system? Of course, just like there are people here working the system. Um, because the system doesn't protect itself, there's no vested interest to protect itself because it's not the government's money, it's yours. I understand. But it's not going to change, Rick. These same people I, who I, are working it now are not going to get educated. To, they're not going to acquire skills. It's got to change. It can't go on forever. We can't continue down this, ro- know, this rabbit hole. They have hole. to leave. They it, have to leave then. Well, I, I don't see how that's going to happen either. Um, you know, about half of all the hired workers employed in the entire United States – uh, agriculture w- were unauthorized, what they call unauthorized. The overwhelming majority of those workers coming from Mexico, not all, some were OTMs other than Mexican. The USDA is also warned that any potential immigration reform could have significant impacts on the U.S. fruit and vegetable industry. You know, I used to just look at that, oh, give me a break. The national milk producers, you know, the Department of Labor, the USDA, the National Milk Producers Federation, Agriculture Labor, Labor Economists, uh, they all say, okay, if you're going to do this, do it right. You know, I, I mean, those strawberries aren't picking themselves. When analyzed from the vantage point of information derived from reputable, nonpartisan sources like the Pew Research Center, USDA, United States Department of Labor, Labor uh, you can obtain a clear view of this very, very muddy water. The truth of the matter is, is that illegal immigrants uh, right now are important to the U.S. economy as well as vital to certain industries like agriculture, primarily agriculture. All right, if they are, let's admit it. We allowed it to happen and give them residency. I'm pretty sure MS-13 isn't out there picking cabbage. Um You know, according to the Pew Research Hispanic Trends Project, there were, what, uh, about 9 million unauthorized immigrants? I I don't like that term uh, because it diminishes the fact that we have a law. But I would guess probably twice that much, at least twice that much. That's an increase from 3.8% in 2000, just 18 years ago. Uh, Texas workforce would decrease by, what, 7%? And Texas gross state product would decrease by almost 3%. Furthermore, certain segments of the U.S. economy, like ag, are deeply dependent on these illegal immigrants. We allowed it to happen. All right, so before you load them on a bus, you better figure out who's going to step in and take over. I mean, I'm just trying to be realistic. I know it doesn't play well emotionally, 
Rick, you're a dang old liberal. I'm going to shoot you. Uh, I mean, uh, give me a break. This country doesn't run by itself. We've got to determine what we've allowed to happen, how it's impacting us, and how best how to deal with it. Because I guarantee you, Washington, D.C. is not going to fix it. There's no vested interest for them to fix it. They make too much money off of it, and they simply charge you the tab. You pay for it, and if they can keep you riled up enough, emotional enough, just like those kids on Saturday, they can keep that money train running forever. All right, uh, 420 the time. Somebody during that break just sent me, well, Rick, what about this? 89 illegals picked up in an ice raid in North Texas and Oklahoma. 89 Okay, well, if there are 15 million illegals out there, that'll only take 460 years to get rid of them then. I, I mean, come on, folks. you got to be realistic. We've got to, first you have to convince yourself this is, is a money game. It's a cottage industry for politicians and some states. And then you've got to say, do I want to be talking about this very exact same thing In 30 years. No, you don't. Aren't you getting tired of paying for for Democrats and Republicans' grand adventures? I mean, how much money do we spend on the Russia investigation? How much money are we spending on this stupid Stormy Dan... uh, What's her name? Stormy Daniels, I think. Yeah, Stormy Daniels. Let's see. Well, when you do your taxes this year, be sure and check the box X number of dollars for porn stars. I mean, look at all the goofy stuff that's going on in D.C., and you're paying for it. Isn't it time to come to some fruition on this? How much is it going to cost to sue Sanctuary City? Sanctuary City suing the government. Back and forth. At some point, you've got to say, stop. Nobody's making a thing out of this except the folks in D.C. All right. Let's get to your calls. Let's go to... Uh, Grady in Fort Worth. Grady, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Grady? I am doing well, Rick. Thanks. Uh, as always, enjoy your show. Um, I kind of have these thoughts. The first thing, to answer your question directly, uh, really, the haves have never given anything to the have-nots when, unless there was a knife to their throat. Yeah. Well, so that's, a way that's to put in the it. history. Uh, now, it, my thoughts on the subject is, Let's incentivize incentivize all these companies that are doing business in China to move their businesses to Mexico and Central America. Then let's go after, like you mentioned a second ago, let's start treating these people, the real criminals in this whole issue, the people that are enticing these people to come here. Cut the head off the snake. We With illegal labor at your company, we're going to treat you like a drug dealer. We're going to take everything that you got – We're going to put you in jail that you cannot prove that you didn't profit from by illegal labor is ours. We're going to liquidate that. That's going to go into a slush fund to help people deport. It's we could, you know, if it were left up to the constituency, if it were left up to the people in this country, we would have fixed this a long time ago. We would have fixed this a long time ago. But by not fixing it, it grew and grew, and grew, and grew, until the numbers now are almost un- unmanageable. So you've got to do something you probably don't want to do. You want to allow residency to those non-criminal aliens. That's about the only way to fix it now. You know, maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago, you could have done some type of mass deportation. You can't do that now. You know, they say there, you know, there's about 11, 12 million illegals. It's more like 20. So now it's grown into a problem that you're going to have to give a little to get a little. You want security, sovereignty, and security for your country? You either got to vote these empty suits out of Washington and install people that will actually create and maintain a border before you do anything, or you just got to give it up, take the first boat off this rock. I mean, that's what it's come down to. You didn't do it. I didn't do it. The illegals only did what they were allowed to do. And if they were trying to feed their family, yeah, I'd probably do the same thing. 
we have been failed by the federal government in this area. Yeah, well, many areas, but specifically for today's conversation, this area. So to fix it, you're going to probably have to do some things you don't like. Does anybody get this at all? Anybody? All right. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9... Steve says make Mexico the 51st state. Well, there you go. Um, 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. I'm Rick Roberts. Your call straight ahead. All right, uh, 4.33 the time. Well, the politicians in D.C., uh, and I'm talking, when I say politicians, I'm talking left and right. They're hoping you stay emotionally driven by this uh, illegal immigration thing. They don't want you to crunch the numbers. They don't want you to see, uh, you know, where the money goes. They just want you upset because if they can keep you upset, you know, if there's a boogeyman that they can point to, they can keep you uh, separated, then uh, they can get your vote. Not unlike hundreds of thousands, I think up to a million. David, wasn't in a uh, final tally nationwide, a million uh, people took part in that uh, March for Our Lives? Roughly, yes, sir. Yeah, about a million. Ki- yeah, and they could do that. They were able to choreograph that on a loosely used term called assault weapons in a school shooting. They've done the same thing with most of the voting public in America on illegal immigration. It's a money train, just like almost, not quite, but almost everything else in D.C. is a money train. Except the money train stops in the District of Columbia, never makes it to your town or mine. That's why people like uh, Dirty Harry Reid go to D.C. dead broke and retire multimillionaires. Think that think that was his salary? I'm pretty sure not. All right. Uh, let me get to your calls. Let's go to uh, Tom and Alan. Tom, thank you for waiting. I appreciate your patience. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing fine, Rick. I'm looking at the right side of the grass, so it's a good day. <laughs> good for you. Um. I figured I'd call and talk to you about the illegal immigration thing, and we can also talk about what an assault weapon is. Um, first of all, about I'm, I'm a retired first responder, and um, one of the things that occurred probably 12 to 15 years ago, uh, Dallas and a few other places, they passed a, a deal where you could not hire somebody unless they were legal. They were in the country legally or had a work visa or something like that. Right. Well, I was starting to go to some of the restaurants and everything else where the illegals were working, and literally they were grabbing the entire cook crew. Well, the restaurant has nobody to cook, so literally they're losing money. But what occurred during that whole situation, everybody was moaning and groaning about, you know, the the, the ICE doing their job. But what occurred was... Everybody started, all the illegals started seeing the fact that we're not going to be able to get a job, one. I think at the same time, I think it was either Farmers, I think it was Farmers Branch, had uh, a, a deal where the apartment complexes didn't have to lease to you unless you were a U.S. citizen or here legally on a work visa or some type of visa or something like that. Right. Well, that was challenging in court. In the fair, under the fair housing law, and they said that that was illegal. You couldn't do that. But what was funny was during this whole process, the illegal aliens were self-deporting because, one, they couldn't find work, and they were having a hard time finding a place to live. So they were basically self-deporting. So there is a way to do it without having to spend a lot of money. Uh, but you just, Washington does, doesn't want to hear that. I really don't care about what Washington wants to hear. Washington ain't living out here. Well, that's the point. That's the point, uh, Tom. We've got to take it away from D.C. Exactly. We have to take it away from D.C. Whether we codify uh, federal law at a a state law level, um, whatever we have to do, you have to take it away from D.C. 
because there's no political will to get anything done. Um, this wall that everybody is so, you know, excited about, I was excited about it too. I mean, I never thought there was going to be, you know, a concrete wall 10 feet tall. I mean, that's, that's not possible. But I figured that, hey, maybe that was a, that was a term for a border. I mean, again, I asked you this earlier. Think about that for a second. Why does the United States not have a southern border? I'm not talking about the little line on the map. I'm, I'm talking about literally, why don't we have a southern border? Answer that one question. Why do we not have a southern border? Lee, can you answer that? Put you on the spot, didn't I? You did. It's a tough question. It is. Why does the United States of America, a superpower prior to the Obama administration, why do we not have a southern border? Are we just so cool, so hip, so, you know, just all that, that we don't need borders at all for our country? I mean, just the sheer mention United States of America just uh, sends shudders down people's spine. Oh, I don't want to step over there. That's America. Why do we not have a border? I don't, I don't answer that for a second in your own mind. All right. Uh, good call, Tom. I appreciate it. Uh, let's go to Andrew in Fort Worth. Andrew, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Fantastic. How you doing, Rick? I'm doing well. Hey, the answer is because politicians are the ones who make the decisions. <laughs> That's why we ain't got a wall. <laughs> but I think here's the here's the solution. We make Mexico, like Steve said, the 51st state in the United States of America. And then our border becomes really, really small because if you go down there to the end of Mexico in the Central America area, you'll see that, boy, their, their border with, uh, what is it, Guatemala and Ecuador is really small so that would be you know half the money that we would need to spend to secure that part of the border we immediately make them a minimum wage what it is in america we tell the employers you got to pay them that we make them citizens they start paying taxes they see what it's like to be american we tell the government of mexico hey if you don't like this you know you got to (laughs) go Well, we here's here's the problem, uh, uh, Andrew, with that. First of all, Mexico would never acquiesce. Uh, Mexico's government is more corrupt than ours is. Um, their military is corrupt. Their police, their law enforcement, at several different levels, because they have different levels of law enforcement, more corrupt. And the drug cartels would never allow that. You know, back in, what was it, 2010, I did a research piece on this. 2010 or 11, the second largest source of income, identifiable income to Mexico, was what? Money being sent back to Mexico by people at working outside the country. They, they, they don't, they'd never do that. They'd lose money. You know, we have to, as Americans, look at this and say, okay, our politicians have failed us miserably on this. The sanctity, sovereignty, and security of a nation is hanging in the balance. We have to take this back. Codify federal law at a state level uh, like uh, Jan Brewer in Arizona tried to do in Phoenix and say, okay, we're going to fix it. If you're illegal, once we have uh, the border completed and under control, you get residency. If you're not a criminal, you can stay. And if you want to work towards, you know, a pathway to citizenship, you can do that if you want. You know, but we're not going to spend money hand over fist every time a politician sneezes over illegal immigration. We're just not going to do it. You know, you've bled us dry. We, we've got no more to give. That's what you tell D.C. D.C., you won't do your job, so the states are going to have to. Now, what would be so wrong with that? 4.42 the time. Your calls. i tell you what let's do. Let's check your afternoon drive. All right. Uh, more protests. In, uh, is California still a state? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. I need to send the island monkey Mickey out there. Uh, get, yes, thing, get things straight. Yeah. Uh, Moonbeam Brown could use his help. 
Well, they still have military bases in California, so yeah, I they, guess yeah. it is a state. Yeah, they still have. Yeah, it's still a, a state couple. so far. Um, more protest over police officer involved shootings. You got to get a handle on this too. And media, you know, don't push it one way or the other. Give the facts: who, what, when, where. Stop. Just stop. Hey, we can get these kids really ginned up after last Saturday's march with more police shootings. Well, you know. I've got something to say on that, but it'd take way much, too much time uh, that I have left. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, David in Bedford. David, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Hey, Rick. How you doing, sir? Good. Good. You know, Rick, you asked the question, uh, why don't we have a border? And, and, and you know, at, at one time, we, in the past, we didn't have to have a border. We were surrounded by water. The problem has never been, been, the, been the north. It's always been from the southern uh, upward route. And as a country, in the past, you know, we were, we were strong families, strong uh, uh, business. We, at one time, we only had three major news networks. And as a nation, we were galvanized together as a country under the, under the flag. Well, we had problems. Well, we've always had problems. But, but things started to change. And especially when Ted Kennedy pushed for the uh, new immigration laws that started in the 60s, they had a little sneaky snake plan started way back then. And it just continued to grow. And by the 70s, we were a nation divided from the Vietnam War to so you name it, and next thing you know, we're, the liberals are, are moving full steam forward. And, and unfortunately, too many Republicans, have, uh, liberals uh, Republicans, have joined on, 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 on the same ship with the uh, uh, or the train with the Democrats. And, and my gosh, we're, it's out of control. And uh, well, we it is it is out of control. Back. And it's you know, you look at our northern border. You never hear much about that, do you? You don't hear much about the Canadian border. Do you know when the northern border uh, with Canada was established? Anybody? Raise the hands. You know, David? I don't think there is one. Yeah, there is. It was established in 1846-48. Okay. Uh, it had to do with the Oregon Trail or the Oregon Territories in Great Britain. Okay. It was established in 1850. That's why you never hear about it. It's been in place since 1850. And if you travel in and out of uh, British Columbia or wherever you happen to be going, you can see it works pretty well. But there are vast expanses of total wilderness out there. I don't know why anybody would cross there. You'd probably die. But, um, I mean, we, the reason we don't talk about it is because we've had one for all those many years. And, you know, the last caller was somewhat right. We created this problem ourselves. We created this problem ourselves. Do you have that, that uh, John McCain uh, bite about picking – cabbage or whatever whatever it is give me a second i better yeah, find it yeah see if you can find that before i have to go off the air yeah, we cre- created this problem remember remember they're just here doing jobs americans won't do remember that that was that was bush on his push for amnesty but we were getting played with that too that's not what i'm talking about now I'm talking about coming to the realization we've been played by our government for about 40, 50 years. The vast majority of illegals that are here are hardworking, trying to feed their families and come up with a better way of life. And they were able to come here because our non-representing representatives didn't protect the country. You know, they're still responsible, but, you know, our government's responsible too. And why nothing has been done, why there's no border now, why there's nothing is because they're using us just like the left is using those kids you saw in uh, all the demonstrations on saturday keep them ginned up keep them emotional and push your agenda through that's exactly why it's not fair to you you're paying for all these lawsuits department of justice sanctuary cities who's suing who um i mean it's 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 ridiculous We've come to a point of diminishing returns. It's time for us to take it back from Washington and get something done. And for me, that's residency. If you're not a criminal, not a gangbanger, you get to stay. All right? And then uh, you want to work towards citizenship, become an American? Great. But we don't do any of that until we establish and maintain a border. Remember, remember John McCain, he stepped right in the big middle of it. He was talking to, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of people. Listen to this. I'll offer anybody here $50 an hour if you'll go pick lettuce in Yuma this, this season and, and pick for the whole season. So, okay, sign up. Okay, 
Why don't you sign up? You sign up, and you'll be there for the whole season. The whole season, okay? Not just one day, because you can't do it, my friend. Oh, excuse me? You're telling people that are trying to pull themselves out of the economic black spiral that this country put them in? $50 an hour? That's $400 a day. Uh, you got to be there all season. I tell you what, you can't play it again. Play. This is John. I don't have a lot of love for John McCain. I wish him nothing but the best. Um, you know, may God bless him as far as his health is concerned. I've interviewed him one on one in studio. He's a very tough interview because he's very stoic. All right, play it again. I'll offer anybody here fifty dollars an hour if you'll go pick lettuce in Yuma this this season and and pick for the whole season. So, okay, sign up. Okay, when you sign up, you sign up, and you'll be there for the whole season. The whole season, okay? Not just one day, because you can't do it, my friend. You can't do it. John McCain's going to tell you that you can't do it. $50 an hour? The line would be across the state line. All right, uh, listen, uh, let me see if I can get one more call in here. Uh, Bob in Frisco. Bob, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing excellent. Uh, thank you for taking my call. You bet. Um, I actually, and I thought of one thing while you were talking, uh, two quick points. One, I'd argue that I don't think the Democrats really care about solving DACA or the immigration problem because they had a golden chance to do so with the omnibus bill and putting everything in there, and they failed to do so. If that was a top ten thing for them to do, it would have been there. So I'd kind of argue that, yeah, it's lip service because they want the votes. It'll be a, it'll be a big issue in 2019 when they think they can register voters and uh, hopefully get power if you're on their side. Well, um, I but- would I would extend that, and you'll forgive me if I'm not as trusting as you. Um, I don't think the Democrats or the Republicans want a wall. I mean, there's a Republican president that says yes, he does, but he just signed an omnibus bill that contributed a billion dollars to the wall when the projected cost is twenty five billion. So when are we getting that? Exactly. Here's a point that maybe we could try to do. Maybe we could have it just stuff. I mean, we're a democracy. Maybe we could vote on it. I think. How about that? Everyone is arguing that our side has really poor immigration laws. It's not fair. It's too harsh. It's a, but I don't hear anything, any pushback on the Mexican. Uh, well, here's the thing. It's it, This should not be a us versus them, Republican versus Democrat, liberal versus conservative. It's the American people against everybody working in that bubble called Washington, D.C. There's the issue. That's going to do it for me. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether we agree or not. That's always my priority. Stick around. Mark Levin's upset about something, I promise. I'll be back tomorrow at 2. And uh, Mickey, the uh, Desert Island monkey, will be here too. I don't even know what that means.